Hello lovely students and welcome back to English with Lucy. I've got an incredibly important video today. It's all about business English, but it goes deeper than just grammar. <laughs> We're talking about passive aggressive business English. Anyone who works in an office in the UK knows that the corporate world can be extremely passive aggressive. We will say things in emails or over the phone that don't seem insulting or angry, but what we really mean is that we bloody hate you and we want you to die. So I'm going to help you with it. Today we are going to go through lots and lots of passive aggressive phrases and I'm going to tell you what they actually mean what we actually mean when we use these phrases. If you are in the situation where you're looking to find a job in English or you want to move to an English speaking country and work there, I have something that might really help you. I know that lots of students want to work in English, but there's a big barrier and that is the language skills and the technical vocabulary and the jargon and the slang. The English you learnt in school might not work in an English speaking office. I have created a 30 day course, it's got 30 lessons, it's called the Business English Challenge. You don't have to take it in 30 days, but if you want to seriously make quick progress then I recommend you do. My students have had amazing results from this course. Through the course we discuss so much vocabulary and so many situations in which you would use business English vocabulary. We also put in lots of listening practice as well so you don't have embarrassing situations where you don't understand what someone's saying. We are running a special price on this challenge at the moment. It's time limited but if you click on the link in the description box you can view the course, view the special offer and decide if you want to sign up. We would love to have you on board in our community. Right, let's get started with the lesson. Okay, the first phrase is, it seems there's been a misunderstanding. It seems there's been a misunderstanding. What we really mean here is, I gave you the necessary information, but you clearly did not follow the instructions. Notice how in the first phrase we use the passive voice. There has been a misunderstanding. I'm not saying it's you, I'm not saying it's me. What we really mean when we say this is, did you read the instructions? Obviously you haven't paid attention. An example, it seems there's been a misunderstanding. Why are you still copying in everyone on every email? Another one, I understand it's not your fault, but this means it's your fault. <laughs> It probably is your fault and you need to fix the issue. I don't care whether it's your fault, it might be your fault. I don't care whether it is, I just need you to fix this problem. I understand it's not your fault, but please go ahead and correct the contact details of every single client. Okay, another phrase, and I must admit, I hate this phrase. This phrase is an example of jargon, specialized language, practically designed to exclude other people. The phrase is, Let's circle back later. Let's circle back later. To circle back means to return. Why can't they just say, let's return to this later? But no, it's business jargon. If someone says, let's circle back later, you know what they really mean is, what you're saying isn't important right now. An example, I know you want to talk about your bonus, let's circle back later. That's not important right now. Next we have, let's stick a pin in this for now. Let's stick a pin in this for now. This means, this is entirely irrelevant and we're never going to look at this ever again. Actually, Bob, let's stick a pin in that for now. We have much more important matters to discuss. One I love, I must say, I do see the humour in this. That's an interesting perspective. That's an interesting perspective. What we actually mean is, that's a ridiculous idea. I can't believe you've actually just said that. An example, thank you for your suggestion of wearing pink on Wednesdays. That's an interesting perspective. The next one is super common. It is, as per my previous email. As per my previous email. This means, I've already given you this information, can you not read? An example, as per my previous email, everyone must come to work on Saturday. That means, I've already said this in another email, didn't you read it, I can't believe I have to say it again. The next one, we'll take that into consideration. We'll take that into consideration. This means, we're going to forget about that after this conversation. An example, you want paternity leave for when you adopt a puppy? We'll take that into consideration. Next we have, 
Thanks for the input. Thanks for the input. This means your unwanted opinion is not welcome. Thanks for the input, Jack, but please don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. Next we have, let's play it by ear. Let's play it by ear. This means I hear what you're saying, but it's not going to happen. If someone came to me and said, the weather's so nice today, can we move our desks outside? I might say, let's play it by ear and first focus on the tasks we need to finish, i.e. no. Another one is with all due respect, with all due respect. And this is similar to saying no offence, but it means what I'm going to say is probably going to offend you or probably going to upset you. An example, with all due respect, I don't think short shorts are appropriate workplace attire. Another one, this is like the physical version, the spoken version of as per my last email, it is as I previously stated. It means as I literally just said, I literally just said this. As I stated previously, you can't ask for two weeks holiday with one day's notice. Next we have, I respectfully disagree. Oh, isn't that so lovely? <laughs> I respectfully disagree. This means you are wholly and utterly wrong. I totally disrespectfully disagree with you. An example, thank you for the corrections on my report. I must respectfully disagree with them and change it back to how it was. Next we have, for future reference. For future reference. This simply means, so that you don't mess up again in the future. For future reference. An example, for future reference, don't download any more inappropriate videos to your work laptop. Thanks. And finally we have, as I'm sure you're aware. As I'm sure you're aware. This means, yeah, you should know this. I've told you this a million times. As I'm sure you're aware, it's important to avoid eating other people's sandwiches. We've all met someone that eats people's food from the office fridge. Ugh, worst kind of people. This video has made me angry and passive aggressive. <laughs> There are three more things I want to touch on. Three ways to end an email. We communicate so much through how we end an email. Warmest regards means I love you. I love you, you are my main person. Kind regards means you're okay, we're good. But just regards on its own, oh. If you get an email with just regards, you need to ask what you've done wrong. <laughs> it means you are the worst, you are getting on my last nerve. Regards, Lucy. And with that, possibly the most passive aggressive lesson I have ever made, I bid you farewell. Don't forget to check out the Business English Challenge. The link for that and the special price is in the description box. Also, make sure you download the free PDF. There is loads of extra information on this PDF. Lots of activities, example emails. We take it a little bit more seriously on the PDF. If you'd like to download that, just click on the link in the description box. You enter your name and email address. You sign up to my mailing list and it will arrive directly in your inbox. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Instagram, English with Lucy. I've also got my personal Instagram, Lucy, and this might be interesting for you, I also have my vlogging channel where I document our lives here in the English countryside, but importantly, every single vlog is fully subtitled so you can use it to acquire new vocabulary and improve your pronunciation skills and your listening skills. It's quite a good resource. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.